and gentlemen, still sponsored by Elite Auto Works Car Repairs, live on VIPBoxing.tv. This is our next contest. Six three-minute rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the black color shorts, trim with gray. At the weight, he scaled nine stone, 12 pounds. Tonight is his 59th professional appearance. He welcomes, he hails from Barcelona, Nicaragua, aquí está Rafael Castillo. And opposing him, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the black leather shorts trimmed with lime green and silver. And the way in he scaled 10 stone, three pounds, one ounce, he has an outstanding record, 20 contests, 17 wins. Five of those wins coming by way of knockout, just two defeats and one draw. Hailing from Hull, here is Samir Munemni. <laughs> Timekeeper at the bell is Peter Humphrey and the star referee in charge of the action, the one, the only, Mr. Howard Foster. Six three-minute rounds. You both know the rules, keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both watch your heads in close, good luck to you both, touch gloves. Well, here we go then. I think Tommy Coyle summed it up nicely before for some uh, he, he wants one last push at a title level before he packs the boxing in. And it's an important night for him tonight because he can't afford another loss. He definitely can. You know, he won the English title last time out, but... An Second upset, out, round one. An upset defeat here just pushes him all the way back to square one, doesn't it? Maybe brings an end to the entire thing. Yeah, exactly. And it is an important night, like we say. And he'll be looking to get the job done in style as well. Look good and hopefully get the opportunity. He's mixed with some good people, as Samir. Dropped a split decision a couple of years ago to Ryan Walsh for the British, the British title. Ryan's a very, very underrated fighter, very awkward, tricky guy. One of the most underrated in the country, I think. Yeah, there's no disgrace in that at all. Ryan is a quality level fighter. And uh, before that, Josh Warrington, the only other man to beat Samir, so you can see the level that Samir's capable of mixing at. That uh, Warrington fight was it sort of like a crossroads one, you know? Yeah. Samir went into that as a favoured guy. Yeah, and it says a lot now. You look where Josh went on from, from there, and uh, Samir was supposed to win that night. So it shows what the levels that he could have got to, and, and he'll be wanting to get some more titles under his belt before he retires. No doubt about that. Very calm, very relaxed. Already he's looking levels above, isn't he? When he's throwing his shots, he's landing pretty much everything that he throws. We'll keep the look like steam going, and Mr. Castillo looks just like Manuel Medina, who fought Paul, Ing Paul Ingle in Hull. I think when Paul Ingle won his mm -hmm. world title, I think that was in Hull. He looks just... Uh, Maybe Medina had a few more scars on his face, but otherwise, he looks pretty much like him. Samir looks all business. Yeah, he's loading up to the body early as well. When he goes downstairs, he's putting a lot behind the shots. He uses his jab from, from low down as well. Tommy was talking about that earlier as well, wasn't he, saying... Now it's difficult to see that when your opponent's throwing the jab from down there. And Samir does that a lot. Heavy handed as well. He, you know, he, he moved Castillo there with that left hook. It landed around his shoulder. He's marked up under the left eye as well, Castillo. He doesn't want to load up with everything, though. He, he looks good when he sets his shots up and then lands with those heavy hands. He doesn't want to try everything like that. Yeah, showing his strength again there. He is badly marked up under that left eye already, isn't he? Yeah, Samir just getting a warning there. But just looks much too much here for Castillo. Good opening round that for Samir, he'd be happy with that.
very relaxed in the corner as well. He's hardly breathing. Jimmy Harrington's got some work to do. Yeah, mission impossible tonight for Jimmy. He said to me then between fights that he's learned a lot of Bulgarian tonight from doing the corner. His career in that somewhere. <laughs> Got a very able assistant there, hasn't he? Oh. Mm -hmm. Years of experience in him wafting. Corners, 10 seconds. And Jimmy just telling him to keep that left hand up. In sign language. In sign language. <laughs> seconds out, round two. Yeah, good straight left hand to the body. Castillo was already reading up to the body as well. It talked about earlier, he's loading up with the shots to the body and he continued to do that at the opening of this round. Just got to set that right hand up. Looks big and strong, doesn't yeah. he, Samir? <laughs> totally unfazed by anything coming back at him. Bit of a frustration, I would have thought, for him the, uh, the fight with Isaac Lowe and Ryan Walsh being scored a draw, and you know, they're tied up in a rematch now, so yeah. that's the British title taken off the table. Uh, obviously, Josh Warrington's just moved out of his reach for the foreseeable future, but he'll, he'll, he'll have his eye on some of these people at, um, around the top of the rankings. Yeah, and he's at the stage of his career now where I'm sure he'll take any fight in that division, and any title opportunity that does come up, it, he will take it. Joy Peacock watching on the live stream, saying there's no doubt in which direction this one's going. Come on, Sam. I mean, we say it a lot, don't we? But the key for him now is just to stay in the gym and, and wait for that phone call, because it will come eventually. He might have to wait, but it will come. And he's got to be ready to take it, because there won't be too many of those phone calls left. Tommy was talking earlier about the, the straight shots making the difference. That's been the key for Samir tonight, hasn't it? That jab's been... It's murder Castillo, really. Yeah, when he loads up with the, the right hand and just throws it, there Castillo it is can see it a mile off. But when he sets it up with that jab, it's working lovely for him. and Especially to the body as well. He's landed some good shots to the body, straight shots. That was a nice left foot landed. Castillo charge forward. Castillo just seems to know enough to take a sting out of most of these punches. In the first round, it looked like it might be a pretty short night for Samir, but Castillo just hanging around, isn't he? Yeah, he's just doing enough to stay in there and... I think he took a lot less shots in the second round than he did in the first. But well, still, six rounds is plenty of time, isn't it, with relentless pressure like this. In the end, well, on that left eye, get the swelling down. Good atmosphere here at Hull City Hall tonight. Yeah, I think Steve Woods has said in an interview earlier in the week, it's one of his favourite boxing venues. You can see why when it's packed. Loud noise in there. Yeah, and we talked about it earlier. Hull needs another star, don't they, to really catapult it back onto the boxing mat with, with Luke and Tommy fighting away from here. Yeah, I've seen a, a, a good few fighters tonight. I thought Levi Giles looked like one Corners, to really keep seconds. an eye on earlier. No, he's looked to have that something different about him. Yeah. Zishan Khan, very unusual style. Second very relaxed. Round three. The test, Zishan will skate past guys like that and the test will come when he moves up the levels. Samir's the proven guy, isn't he? Yeah. And even Ryan Gibbons, he's exciting. And he's an exciting guy to watch. Both fights he's had now have been exciting. And you know, that, that could be good for Hull. It's the same with Tommy. Tommy's never in a dull fight. 
He might not be the best technical boxer in the world, but he certainly brings the crowds in when he fights. He's just stood behind you, Luke. Behind <laughs> by me? I think he needs to be the first to admit it. Any oh. boxer that tells you he, he fired 45 power shots in the first minute <laughs> of his first few fights will agree with me on that one, I think. And talk about power shots, Samir just loaded up with a big left hook there. Yeah. Luckily for Castillo, just fell a couple of inches short. It's two and a half years now since that defeat to Split decision defeat to Ryan Walsh down at Wembley Arena for Samir. Time flies, doesn't it? You know, in that time, at least he's just beaten Elvis Guillen. Got uh, obviously beat Razak Najib for the uh, English title. But time does pass by quickly, and other guys on the scene have moved on, haven't they? Yeah, and that's the problem he's had, really, isn't it? And they'll be looking to change that, I think, for one last time. Been a sensible performance this so far though. Just getting the job done in there. That's nice, bro. Right? Nice combination. Finish with that right hand. Yeah, big that telegraph pole jab really knocked Castillo back. Rob Taylor just noticed the uh, ringside when Castillo got pushed to the floor earlier. He seemed to bang his knee on the canvas and it's causing him a little bit of trouble. It's already swelling up a little bit. Keep our eye on that in between rounds. See if he mentions it to his corner. I'm not sure there's much he can do though with the Vaseline on the knee. <laughs> oh, got there with a left hook on Samir. Oh, Samir gets him, comes right back with a right. I think at trading on the ropes is only going to suit one person, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's the wisest move. <laughs> Elliot Foster pulling me up on my pronunciation of Nicaraguan earlier. Of course, it's Reynaldo Cahina, not Rafael. But Stato is the only one that pulled me up on that. He threatened to make the journey here, you know, and then bottled it at the last minute. They wouldn't let Elliot Foster across the Humber Bridge. <laughs> Not for round four, just see a little bit of that action from that third round. Castillo just threw Menemni into a, a couple of exchanges there on the ropes. You wouldn't have thought it would have suited him, but he seems to have escaped. Corners, 10 seconds. Yeah, but I wouldn't advise it, him trying that too many more times. It, walking straight into Menemni's hands there. Seconds out, round four. I was just watching him in the corner there. He didn't seem to, didn't seem to mention the, uh, the knee too much, Luke. No. to me when he's just using that jab and setting things up mm. rather than crowding you know closing the distance a bit quickly and getting into messy exchanges yeah, he's by far the superior boxer in there isn't he and, and he's showing it in glimpses <laughs> little facts that we get given these days on Commentary, Samir runs a Yankee Land burger joint and he's a massive burger fan. It's probably the worst job you could have as a boxer, smelling the burgers every day. <laughs> oh, does seeing it all the time put you off them? 
Yeah, maybe. Well, Mr. Castillo's seen a few too many of them right hands and he's probably put <laughs> off them for life. <laughs> First to the body and then up to the head. Well, Castillo's last fight, he fought a lethal Lee Wood. Very, very talented fighter from Sheffield. Got stopped in the third round. So here to me, he just looks like he's, he's, he's landing hard shots, but he doesn't look in too much of a rush to get it over and done with. No, he'll, he'll probably value the rounds, to be fair. Getting in there and getting six rounds at a decent pace under his belt. He's not looking for the stoppage, but I'm sure if it comes, he'll, he'll jump on Castillo. He's trying to, lots of feints, but Castillo, understandably, he's been stung a few times, and he's... He's not going for them now. Samir's going to have to create his own openings. Another round in the bag. There's that jab to the body we were talking about earlier. He's worked the body well tonight, I think. He's done a lot of straight shots to the body. There's another one. Yeah, he's mixed it up well, hasn't he? Yeah. And kept Castillo guessing. And that's exactly what you've got to do against opponents like this. There's no point being one-dimensional because they'll work you out pretty quickly. You've got to be unpredictable. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round five. Here we go. Fifth round of six there. Samir Menemni against Rafael Castillo. All one way traffic so far. Looks like Menemni's come out to make a bit of a statement here. Yeah, Castillo's decided the best way is to fire fire with fire. I tell you, credit to Castillo. You know, he's been he's taken some flush shots. He's been rocked a couple of times, but still in there, isn't he? And still willing to engage. Yeah, 100%. He's he certainly earned his money in there. Samir just seems to be landing a lot more shots now. You know, the defence is kind of being neglected by Castillo now. Stabbing jab to his body loop, that body work you were talking about. Nice lead right hand as well from Menemni. He has been in a, a, a totally different league, really, to Castillo. But Nicaraguan's extremely, extremely tough. Looks much older than 25, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's been around for years.
Again, uh, as we, a nice lead right hand there from Minemi. He's having to create his own openings. Uh, Castillo isn't going for a feints anymore. It's good to see he's not getting carried away, though. He's still using those feints to try and just draw something. Turns into a bit of a war this at times, isn't it? Yeah, I think Samir's more than happy to trade, isn't he? He'll have felt exactly what Castillo's got. There's nothing to worry him, so he's more than willing to get his own heavier shots off. They kept him in there, corner team. Really setting himself there, Samir. Just couldn't quite, couldn't quite find the, no, the it, shot, could he? No, it, there was a few shots there that were close to being perfect, and they just slightly out, and it meant that Castillo could move off, and one of them connected properly, and I think it would have been game over. That was a nice Corners, right ten seconds. Now for the sixth and final round here, Samir. Menemni. Seconds out for your sixth and final round. He bounces off his stool. Rafael Castillo doesn't. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. Job right down the pipe. Just missed that lead left up a quarter. Twenty seconds ago and landed it, shortened it up and landed it that time to me. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier, Samir looks massive in there, doesn't he, tonight? Upper body, he looks huge. And he's clearly been training hard as well, training for the distance. He's been training to, to go longer in fights, which is exactly what we mentioned before. Yeah, he's, he's got, got that muscle memory, memory haven't he, yeah. of, of going with 10 and with 12. In all business tonight. Absolutely, as we stated before the fight, absolutely no chance of him taking his eye off the ball and no. slipping back down. No, I think he knew the importance of tonight. And he hasn't needed to take too many risks either. It's been comfortable for him. You know, he's been fighting at the pace he wants to fight at. That was a lot better than setting up that shot with the jab first and then putting the right hand over the top. Big exchange. Heads came close then. The last thing Samir wants now mm. in the last minute of this is to pick up a nasty cut. Yeah, we saw it with Tom Farrell, didn't we, in Liverpool when he got cut with literally 30 seconds left. Uh, it does happen and that is, like you say, is the last thing he needs. Just need to get to the end of this fight now. Take no risks. There we go. Sees it out well. Wins every round from here. Menemni there. And looks extremely pleased with his night's work. Yeah, and I'm not surprised that that's perfect work, really, for him. You can see in the highlights uh, is that every time he threw, really, he was landing. And Castillo was game, but it never looked as if he was going to win. I'll go up and uh, grab a few words with Samir. 
Young Ryan Gibbons has uh, jumped straight out of the shower and straight into the commentary booth. So he'll join you now. Just hand it over to Michael Pass first to, to find out the official result. And then we'll have a little chat with Ryan. And John will go and grab some air for a few words as well. Ladies and gentlemen, after six hard-fought rounds of international action, referee Howard Foster has scored the contest 60 points to 54 points for your winner, the highly respected Samir Munemni. <laughs> A round of applause, please, for Barcelona's uh, Rafael Castillo. Good performance from Samir in a few moments' time. He'll be with John Evans. So we can hear from him after that one. Uh, well done, Samir. All business tonight. You were very relaxed. Jab worked well. You were hard hitting. You must be delighted. Yeah, yeah. It was good. I've been boxed for about nine months. You know what I mean? It was good to get the first few rounds. I could feel the, a bit eager uh, uh, to like to get used to it again. But I felt I got settled a lot better. But uh, just no. obviously, you're pleased to be back in action. But you want another run at these big domestic titles, don't you? Definitely, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't mind the winner of uh, Lund. Um, Lone Walsh for the British, hopefully I'll we'll get the winner, but we'll see what happens. In an ideal world, how does the rest of this year pan out then? I want to keep active, I want to be out again in about eight, eight, eight ten weeks, no later than that really. So I, get, if, I'm, if I'm out busy, you get the best of the smear, so that's what we need to do. And that's the target, the winner of the Walsh and Lowe rematch? Hopefully, but it's not me who to decide that, and it's the board and everything, so we'll, fingers crossed. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, I thought... Everybody saw him beat Ryan Walsh, didn't they? Everybody in the house. Who saw Samir beat Ryan Walsh for the British title? Come on. Let's bring it on to Hull. Well, let's see how that rematch plays on and hopefully get your shot, Samir. Well done tonight. 